to see some new hardware. We're expecting a new console from Nintendo. Now, it's unclear if this is going to replace the Wii or if it's going to be sold alongside the Wii. It's unclear if this is going to be for the hardcore gamer. We don't know how much storage it's going to have. Speculation abounds currently. Um, but we're definitely going to see something new from Nintendo, and we are excited to check that out. That's going to be one of the biggest things coming out of the show. The other new piece of hardware that's going to be at E3 is coming from Sony. It's a new handheld system. Uh, currently has a code name, uh, Next Generation Portable. So hopefully it will get a better sounding name I that, that we'll will sell it as. Uh, <laughs> and this is a rather remarkable sounding piece of equipment. It has a touch screen on top, it has two analog sticks, and it has a touch pad on the underside of it. Uh, it's supposed to also be doing graphics on the level of the PlayStation 3. This all sounds very impressive. It also sounds very expensive. And we know that Sony kind of missed the mark when they sold the PlayStation 3 at $600. And so there's a lot of interest how they're going to handle that with this new system. There are some rumors that aspects of the system are being taken out to be able to get the price under control. It is tough to introduce a new system in this market, especially the handheld. Sony did not do as well as they thought they would with their previous handheld system and the PlayStation Portable, Nintendo just owns that market completely with the DS and the brand new 3DS. But I think it's great that now video games are being played by everybody. You might not think of yourself as a gamer, but if you have a smartphone, maybe you've played Angry Birds, if you maybe go on Facebook, maybe you've played Farmville or Cityville or one of these games, you now start to have an understanding of what games are and what games can be. And a lot of the concepts you find in those games are really translated to these much larger games. We got better graphics, we have sort of more complicated interfaces, but you're still, it's still a lot of the same mechanics. I, I, I think one thing, it, ju just by looking at a game nowadays, with the quality of the graphics, there's already something there that makes you go, okay, that's actually pretty interesting. And a lot of these hooks in the games, like the recently released L.A. Noir, uh, you know, you're a detective in 1947 in Los Angeles. And these things, it, it, it shows how much more clever game developers have, be have become. That, that's a good hook, and it's something that appeals to an older and broader demographic. I think that's sort of the nice thing about games is there are games for everybody and you don't necessarily, there isn't sort of one genre that's always going to be on the top. I think maybe racing games have fallen a little bit by yes, the wayside. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, they used to be, I think, uh, just a much bigger part of the genre. I think racing games will probably rise again. Uh, so it's, I think it just, you know, it, it ebbs and flows. Right now, shooters tend to be sort of the, the popular interest because of the success of the Call of Duty series. And I think one thing we're going to see at this year's E3 is there is a new Call of Duty game, Modern Warfare 3. Uh, that comes from the publisher Activision. Their rival company, Electronic Arts, has their own military shooter. It's called Battlefield 3. Both of them have very, very high-level graphics, and both of them are offering the most realistic experience possible. And I think it's going to be fun to watch that contest play out throughout the week of E3.